ACLU headquarters in Philadelphia. This is Cleats and Cufflinks. And we're here with a Cleats and Cufflinks uh, mini podcast thing. We have Cody Bjorklund with us from the Portland Stags. Uh, Cody, welcome to the East Coast. Thanks for having me. Are you, uh, are you enjoying yourself so far? Yeah, it's been a great day. We've uh, been able to explore a bit, um, kind of see the town, get on the bikes. It's been a good time. <laughs> oh, that's right. You did the bike thing, the, uh, the Indiegogo uh, Rent-A-Bike thing, right? It was fun. We were a little uh, hectic with it. Uh, <laughs> we had probably seven of us all going off in different directions, and uh, yeah, hopefully the the city isn't frustrated with our recklessness. No, nobody hit by a car, though. Fortunately not. Philly is not always uh, kind to bikers. Sure. That's we, the way. we could tell. Yeah, that's the way I usually get around when I'm down here also. Yeah. You use the Indiegogo. Get those little blue bikes, bike around, high speeds. I'm maybe not supposed to do that. But <laughs> I haven't tried one of those I, bikes yet, actually. Uh, they're heavy. The, the dead there's spike. F- there's force. Well, they got to stand up to getting hit by one. cars. <laughs> or each other. <laughs> or each other. You, theoretically, you should go in like a bike pack and just take over a lane or two because that lets the motorists know that you're for real. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The, the, the people respect that kind of thing here. I don't know if it's <laughs> that way fashion. Portland, but. Um, so uh, you got in this morning. Now it's, I guess, uh, just kind of a chill, relaxing day, prepping for the game tomorrow. Uh, we talked to Timmy a little bit earlier, but how important is it to have that day to do that? Because I, I know, I think when you came, came in from Boston, you came in kind of right on top of it, right? Well, uh, fortunately, I was able to get in, I think, Wednesday before the Boston game. I was able oh, to wow. kind of hang out, uh, see the town, um, stretch my legs out, you know, make sure the body was feeling good. I mean, you could imagine sitting in a car to get from Eugene to Portland and then getting on a flight from Portland to Philly. It's, it's, it's a lot. So being able to have that extra day just to kind of walk around, get the muscles going, it's good. I forgot. You do. You come up from Eugene to play, right? I do. How far is that? For those of us who don't know the geography of the Northwest. Sure. About two hours. <laughs> two hours. I think I did that drive when I was out there last time. But. Just for kicks? I don't remember why. Because right? <laughs> you head into Eugene. It's, we, we it's were, a beautiful we were, place. Magra, yeah. Magra and I were out there. We were very confused most of the time. So. <laughs> we just didn't know which way you were going. No, we were just, so you're heading that direction. Just keep the ocean on one side of you. <laughs> so, uh, the obvious question. You're looking forward to anything specific? against the spinners, or in this game specifically, just any sort of uh, notion that you have going into this game? Not a ton. Uh, really just looking for a good game, a competitive one, and I think that we're obviously going to get it. Yeah. Um, excited to play a new team. You know, people are always asking me, you know, who do you want to play? you want to play Boston in the championship game, or do you want to play Philly? And it's, you know, it was kind of a mixed bag of, like, it would have been nice to get another shot at Boston, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, seeing a new face, you know, new faces across the, the line is nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited. Is there? Do you guys have anything specific planned for them? Any uh, any sort of adjustments that you're making based on what you've seen from them on the on the video that they've got, or just anything along those lines? I think we're we're aware of you know some of the pool plays and kind of general you know how they want to run their offense and and some you know some of their D sets. But realistically, we're just coming out to play and play stack frisbee. So we're confident in what we do and. Uh, you know, we know that it's going to work, and so we're just going <laughs> to play ball and and uh, see where it lies. We actually talk about that with you guys a lot on our podcast, with the fact that when you guys come out and play, you just play frisbee. Like, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of teams get finicky about it or changing game plans and stuff based on people. You just come out and just kind of run over people and then go and do, you know, do whatever he's doing over there behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in your eye line. That's yeah, no, it's, it's, this is just <laughs> Well, the nice, the nice thing is, is that we've been, a, a big core of us have been together for six, seven, eight years now. And so we really know, you know, how each other plays. And, and it's been, you know, it's been great to grow over the years. And, I mean, you look at us in year one, went one and nine, had a yeah. horrible, you know, disappointing season. And then for us to turn it around and, as well as we have, you know, things started clicking. We started getting a system down, um, and so now we're just sticking to it and, you know, being confident in what we're doing. Yeah, it's going to be. I think it's, I've, I've been looking forward to all the matchups. I think it's going to be a really exciting game. Uh, looking forward to just seeing you do what you do, which is the what Dusty calls you a shooter was the, was the term <laughs> we used the other day. Uh, yeah, you know, you put, you put the disc into the end zone. You're taking a risk for your team. It's like the possession is going to end one way or the other. It's either going to be a turnover or it's going to be a goal. So you're like putting that weight on your shoulders. And uh, obviously you've put up the numbers this season as 41 assists, something like that. So 
you know, you're obviously comfortable doing that and sort of reading the field well enough to put it into spaces where you let some of these other guys get a good shot at the disc. Um, but one of the things that we talked about in that specific podcast was um, both you and the spinners are two of the teams that have sort of the highest shooting percentage in the league. Generally, when the disc goes into the end zone, it ends up being a goal. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you that makes you a little more timid playing against the, the defense that you'll be facing this weekend versus the folks that you faced over the course of the regular season? Sure. Well, and I mean, all due respect to, uh, you know, Philly's great team, um, but I still have trust in, you know, I got Rafi and Timmy going deep for me and, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, a, a crew of other guys. And so realistically, you know, that's the way I'm able to shoot is because I know that yeah. they're going to come down with the crap that I put up. So, <laughs> you know, so. I wouldn't say it that way, but you're, you're welcome to. Sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're really looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be a great time. Uh, and we'll see you out at the fields. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it.